This is Advanced Markers Part 2. Let's create another marker. This time, instead of Zoom, we'll choose Pre and Post Roll Times. Let's change it to None. Let's go to our Transport. And let's say we're recording vocals. Let's scroll down to here. And say we want to punch in just this line right here. And by highlighting it, it's just going to punch in for that section. So we want to set our pre-roll and post-roll right here. We'll change it to one bar. And now if we're going to record, it's going to start playing one bar before and continue playing one bar after and record just this section. One bar before, one bar after. And then it stops. So that's the pre-roll and post-roll we set up. If we want to save that so we can recall it, let's hit enter and choose it right here. Turn off the time properties and name this one bar. And now if we change this to zero bars, we can now recall it right from here. Watch the numbers over here, changes back to one bar. Now a quick little shortcut for setting up pre-roll and post-roll, if you have something selected like this, you can click over here, hold down Option on the Mac or Alt on the PC. That sets up the pre-roll. Do the same thing on the other side, and that's our post-roll. We can see that better. If I zoom out a bit, do it here. See how the flag changes? Do it over here. The flag moves there. And that's our pre and post-roll. Let's make a marker for that. Make this none, turn this on, and we'll call it pre post two. Now we can go to 20, and it's exactly a bar. We'll go to 21, and it's what we just set up, this one right here. So it's a great way of saving our pre and post roll times to be recalled later. Now keep in mind, you can't turn it off with this, but what you could do is change these to zero. Let's make that 22. Turn this off and call it none. So 20 is one bar, 21 is our custom size, and 22 is no pre roll. So if we're going to record, it's going to start right there and stop right there. So let's take this out of record, hide this, and let's delete these. Our next option is track show high. Let's cancel this. Let's go back out, zoom out a bit, and let's look at all our tracks in the session. Go over here and open it up, and we'll see that all the tracks that are in this session are all visible right now. None of them are hidden. This is the hide button right here. Let's show them all. Show all tracks. And let's save that as a marker. Now, if we hit enter, it's going to automatically go to 20. So that's the next one up. But if we wanted to change that and make it 21, just hit decimal 21 and enter. And it'll automatically go to that number. But for now, let's use 20. Turn the time properties off and choose track show hide. We'll name it all. Hit OK. And now we have a marker. And now that's saved. So let's save a few more. Let's select all the drums from here to here. Let's show just those tracks, only selected tracks. And now we see just the drums. Let's save that. We'll name it drums. Let's do the same thing with bass. Select from here to here. Show only selected tracks. Do the same for guitars. And vocals. And a master and effects returns. So now we can recall just the tracks we want to see at any given moment. Let's close this. 
Let's go back to 20. And we see everything. Want to work on the drums? Just choose drums. And that's all we see. The bass, vocals, and effects returns. Now this is a big reason why we want to remember the numbers. So I try to use the same numbers all the time. 20 is always all, drums is always 21, and so on. So I can close this and just do it by memory. Bass, guitars, and vocals. Effects returns, and all the tracks. So it's good to use the same numbers each time. And if you remember in the last video where we imported tracks, we could also import our markers from session to session. And this is where it comes in handy. If the tracks have the same name and we're mixing a few different songs from the same project, from the same artist, we can import these markers and have this set up automatically. So we can recall a bass just like that. Let's go back to all and let's check out the next option. Besides showing the tracks, we can adjust the track heights. Now we could do this separately, but what I prefer to do is combine this with track show hide, like this. We're back to all. Let's right click it and save it with the track heights. So now these track heights are all saved. Let's go to our drums, but let's change our track heights for our kick and our snare. Because if we're doing any editing, we might want those bigger. Let's right click it. Or we could have hit decimal 21 enter. Would have done the same thing. And just add it right here, track heights. So now if we go to 20, it's everything, but those track heights are recalled as well. Go to 21, it's just the drums, but the kick and snare is bigger. Let's go to bass, and let's make these bigger. And let's resave it. Decimal 22, enter and add in track heights. We'll do the same thing with guitars, make them bigger, and resave it, adding track heights. Notice over here, the flags show up for track heights as well. Switch to vocals, let's make the lead vocal a little bigger, resave it, adding in track heights, Go back to 20, all the tracks, medium height, the drums, the bass, the guitars, and the vocals. So all the heights are saved with the show high tracks. So they group together. Let's go back to all. And let's group our drums. In fact, I already have a group over here. Name drums, turn it on. Now the drums are grouped together. In case I want to edit them, but we could save turning that group on and off. So let's turn it off for now. Make a marker at 30. Choose group enable and we'll name it none. Then we'll turn on the group for our drums. Go to 31 and name it drums group. And now, turn this off. If we go to 30, there's no group. Drums work separately. If we need to group it to do some editing, just go to 31 and it's grouped. So it's a little bit quicker than going over here and turning on group by group. We can just do it with our markers. None, drums are back on ready to be edited, and then back off. So again, it's a bit of a time saver. Now the last option is window configuration. Now I haven't shown you that, that's for the next video, but the purpose of that, because window configurations has its own window, right over here, window configurations, we don't have them yet. But because it has its own window, that can be recalled its own way. The only real purpose 
of doing it with markers is to combine it with other things. So we can set up a window configuration, save it with our marker, and mix it up with track heights, track show and hide, and zoom settings. But I'll show you more of that in the next video. But just know it can be recalled with our markers or memory locations. So, anyway, that's advanced markers. Let's move on to the next video.